Hey everyone, my name is Miles and I'm one of the SIs for Kim1B and today we're going to go over Gibbs Free Energy. So let's just jump right into it. So what is Gibbs Free Energy? So we denote Gibbs Free Energy by the letter G. And what the definition is, it, it is the max amount of energy to do work. And why is it important? So it's important uh, for mainly two reasons. The first reason is that it takes into account delta H and delta S because these are values that also have energy units such as joules. And it takes both those values and kind of combines them into a more broader equation. So it takes these two values into account, and it also is the best indicator to tell us if a reaction is spontaneous or not spontaneous. And you can tell that by the equation. So if delta G, or by the sign, so if delta G, the change in G, if the value is ever negative, that means it is always spontaneous. If the delta G is positive, that means the reaction or process is non-spontaneous. And if delta G is ever zero, it is at equilibrium. So this is one of the most important takeaways from this video, is that delta G negative is spontaneous, delta G positive non-spontaneous, delta G zero, that's equilibrium. So keep these in mind, because these signs tell you a lot. And then the actual equation is delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So you see how from earlier I said that it takes into account delta H and delta S. So you can see in this equation, they're right here and right here. So it takes both of these values and combines them to give a better value in the sense that it tells us more information about the reaction. And also something, just a little tip to keep in mind, if you guys ever see, if you all ever see delta G not the like zero superscripts, we pronounce it as N-U-A-G-H-T, that just means under standard conditions. So that means the delta G of this, let's say, reaction, that means it is under standard conditions. So that means 1 atm or 25 degrees Celsius, also 293 Kelvin. So that's what this not means. And if you ever hear delta G not, that just means the reaction we're looking at or observing or talking about, it is under standard conditions, 1 atm, 25 degrees Celsius. And something to keep in mind is that the T is almost always in units of Kelvin. Okay. So I'm going to do some examples or some scenario problems you might see on like a midterm or a homework or a final. Let me just write out both the equations. Okay. Let's see you get a scenario problem. And the scenario is, let's say your delta H is negative. Your delta S, let's say that's positive, and they don't give you temperature. So you just, they don't give you one in this equation or this reaction. And that question is asking, so under these conditions uh, with a negative delta H, the positive delta S, is this reaction we're looking at spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And there's a chart that talks about each of these conditions and gives you an answer if it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And you can look at that chart in the textbook, but I don't recommend memorizing it because it's kind of difficult. It just takes time and you may forget it. So I recommend just using this equation and critically thinking about how we can alter this equation. So let's just say, for example, so, and delta G is 
delta h t delta s. So what I like to use to solve these equations is use uh, dummy functions or dummy numbers. to plug in. So let's say delta h is negative 10 joules, as an example. Okay. Again, these are dummy numbers. Uh, I didn't get them from a textbook. I just thought of them in my head randomly. And so delta s, let's say that is 10 joules. Okay. And let's say uh, Kelvin, our temperature, let's say that's uh, just 100 Kelvin. So easy, relatively easy numbers. So. Uh, delta H we said is negative 10 joules, negative 10, minus temperature, so the temperature is 100. Delta S, again, that is 10. Okay. So you see we have a negative, a negative 10 minus another negative value, which is, uh, looks like a thousand. So if you have a minus, num uh, minus, minus, a minus, you subtract, you get a very negative number. In this case, it's negative 1,010. And I, you don't need to worry about the magnitude, the actual number, just worry about the sign. So you can see it from this sign that it is a negative value. So if it's a negative value, what does that mean? It means that delta G, again, it is negative. So it has to be spontaneous. So that's how you can use this equation to see if it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Just plugging in dummy numbers and working out the math from there. So let's try another example. So let's try, let's say delta H is positive, delta S is negative, and they don't give us a T. Okay. And the question again is, is this spontaneous or non-spontaneous conditions? Okay. So we're going to use this equation we just used earlier. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So let's use, again, dummy numbers. So delta H, it's positive. Let's just use positive 10 joules. Delta S negative, let's use negative 10 joules. And for temperature, let's just use easy number, 100 Kelvin, or a round number. So we just plug these values into our equation. So we have 10 minus the temperature, 100, times the entropy, negative 10. So we have 10 minus, and then if you multiply these two numbers, you get a minus well, minus 1,000. Okay. And you can see that it's a, you can change these signs. So this would be a positive value because you subtract a negative sign. So that would be a positive 1,010. So you can see that this number is positive. So since this value is positive. That means that the delta G is positive. So this value has to be, or this reaction has to be non-spontaneous. So that's how you can use the equations to figure out if it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous rather than memorizing the actual chart. And that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys and good luck studying.